We're back again today with another Hello, My Name Is, where we're studying the names of God. And just as a reminder as to why we're studying the names of God, let's read our verse again in Psalms chapter 9, verse 10, that says, And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So when we know God's names, we can put our trust in him. It's just another way to get to know him. So we've done kind of an intro, then we talked about Elohim, or strong creator God, and then we talked about God's true, eternal, everlasting name, Yahweh, and then last week we talked about God as a king. And so we're going to read a verse right now that kind of describes what God's name is that we're studying this week. It's in Acts. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts in the letter to the Romans. Okay, Acts chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. And it says, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I really like that verse because... Um, throughout the New Testament, kind of a lot, we hear that the only way to be saved, the only way to live forever with God, to not be held responsible unto death with our sins, is through Jesus and faith in Jesus. And we talked about that last week. And here it is again, another gentle reminder in Acts that there is salvation in no one else. Um, I just like it every time I read it. Um... But the name that we're learning here is actually in the second part of the, is it in the second part of the, oh, it's in the very first part of the um, bit we read at the end of the first verse. It says, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Um, and I don't know if you know what a cornerstone is, but occasionally... When you see an old building, I know my church growing up had just what looked like a rock, kind of by the front doors. It was big and it said, you know, Calvary Baptist Church, and then it gave the dates that it kind of was uh, laid there in the foundation. A cornerstone is something that when you're building that you know is perfectly straight. And when you set out to lay a building, Please. When you set up to lay a building, you would measure this way and this way, you know, like a surveyor would do it these days, and you measure that it is exactly perfectly straight. So if you want it to be parallel or going the exact same direction as the street out front, you'd make sure it's the same distance from the street here and here, and then you know it's completely straight. So after you have your cornerstone laid, then you can lay all the other pieces of the building, and instead of having to measure them this way, and that way, and here and there, you measure it against the cornerstone, because you already did that measuring, you already did that work, and you know that if you're lined up with the cornerstone, you're gonna be okay. So then all the other blocks, or rocks would be measured up against the cornerstone. And then in the end, even if these rocks are a little goofy, you know that because they're up against this red rock, this cornerstone, and in the end, your building is gonna work. Because you didn't have to measure every time, but as long as they all line up with the cornerstone, things will be right as rain. So people who do building, they know this. You know, see this one? I don't know if you can see it, but it's red. It's different than the rest. It's perfect. Um, and so it makes everything else fit together. And these are just blocks. But imagine building back um, in early Bible times. I imagine it would be much more difficult to get things straight. You know, you don't have uh, the big heavy duty equipment that we do now, but they would work really hard to make sure that their cornerstone was perfectly straight. 
so the rest could be built along with it. Um, and so our name of God for this week is Cornerstone or Rock, and we'll get to the rock part later. But Jesus is our cornerstone, and that's what we learned in Acts chapter 4. Jesus is our cornerstone, and we'll read about God as our rock. Um, if the cornerstone isn't placed right, everything else is crooked. But if we are aligned with Jesus, our cornerstone, he's the most important stone in the building of faith. And if we line ourselves up with him, we're going to be in line with God's plan. Um, and then everything that we do is built on Jesus. So let's look in Deuteronomy. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. I think you know the song, right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay. Deuteronomy 32. I believe, let me double check my notes. Yep, Deuteronomy 32, verses 3 and 4. I think one of the most cool things you can do is practice looking up verses in your Bible because you end up getting really quick at being able to find them. And it's really helpful when you sit in big church because then you can follow along with Pastor Joel or Pastor Jay or Pastor Paul or whoever's preaching that day. Um, and it's just kind of nice to be able to look up verses on your own. So Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 3 and 4, it says, For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, all caps, so Yahweh, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. So this verse says that the Lord, Yahweh, is our rock. Jesus is the cornerstone and God is our rock. Um, rocks are pretty common, I'd say. They're everywhere. I'm looking out my front door. I see some rocks. I've got kind of like a cactusy garden out front with rocks in it. And if I look out to my backyard, there's some rocks because by the side of our house, we've got a lot of rocks. Um, rocks are kind of everywhere. Rocks are hard. They can look like a lot of different things. Um, you can barely break them. Sometimes you can't break them at all. Um, mountains are made of rock. There's all sorts of different ways to be a rock. But when we talk about God as our rock, the word rock is actually super specific. It doesn't really mean just little pebble. It means um, like a rock with a cleft in it. And a cleft in a rock would be not quite a cave, but similar in that it would be, here's a big rock face, it would be like an indent, where if you were standing in that indent, you would have refuge and shelter and the wind wouldn't be able to get to you um, and it would keep you safe and protected. So in Hebrew, this word rock from Deuteronomy means this cleft in a rock or the place where you can hide. You would never be found by your enemies if you were there. It's a refuge or a safe place. Um, in Psalms chapter 18 verse 2, oops, went too far. Um, We read something else, and it says, The Lord is my rock, the Lord, Yahweh, all caps, Lord, is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Um, this whole chapter in Psalms, chapter 18, is titled at the beginning. You know, sometimes when you look at your Bible, it'll give you the... Um, chapter and kind of what it's about, especially in Psalms. It's really one of the only places we see that because each little chapter is kind of on a different subject and so they've got titles just like books. And so it says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, Psalms chapter 18. Um, and it is something written by David and it's a song that he wrote about the Lord, Yahweh, when he was rescued from the hand of his enemies and from Saul. And so then David wrote this out of thankfulness um, and praise. And he says, 
The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Um, so we know that if Jesus is our cornerstone and God is our rock, that we can take refuge in God. Um, saying that God is our rock is kind of saying that he's like our safe place, a fortress, some might say like kind of like a fortified castle you know there's a moat and a drawbridge and nobody can get in um it's these verses are saying that god is our safe place because he has the power to save us he's the only one that can save us by dying on the cross like what we read in acts um chapter four and you know sometimes things in life are just plain old scary you know, or frustrating, or frightening, um, or bad, and we don't like what's happening, and maybe, um, you know, we get sick and have to go to the hospital, and that's scary, or we thought we were going to win our soccer game because our team was undefeated, and we were playing kind of the worst team, but they beat us, and that doesn't feel good, or, you know, <laughs> maybe... You're starting distance learning for school, and a week and a half in, you're thinking, hey, this is pretty easy, I don't have any homework. But actually, it's because you just didn't see the part where the homework was listed, and now you have to catch up on everything. <laughs> um, you know, bad things happen for what seems kind of like no good reason, um, but God is our rock. He is our refuge. He is our shelter. He is our safe place that we can come to with concerns and questions. You know, God doesn't promise us a life that doesn't have tough times. God promises us that he will always be there. He will always be there to provide that refuge and that safety and that strength for us. Um, there's a really good story that Jesus tells in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, that's kind of a time where he taught people how to have a relationship with God and how to walk like a Christian life. Um, it's in Matthew uh, chapter 7, and then we're going to read verses 24 through 27. And this one um, also has kind of a little chapter title, um, as Matthew does, and it says, Build your house on the rock. So this is Jesus speaking, and he says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Jesus is the solid rock. When we listen to him and do what he tells us to do, we are going to be safe even though the rains fall and the floods come. Kind of the scary stuff in life. When we choose to follow on our own way and ignore Jesus, not build our foundation on him, our lives just kind of fall apart when the storms and the rains come. So God is our rock. When we listen to him and do what he tells us to do, he keeps us safe. Um, and then the very last part that we're going to talk about today is kind of funny. Don't get offended. But the Bible says that we, those who love God and follow him, are kind of a living rock. So not only is Jesus the cornerstone and God is the rock, but we are considered living rocks. So let me read this to you. Um, it's in First Peter Chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It says, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Um, that's all right. It goes on. That's a pretty good chapter. Um, so it says that we are founded on Jesus, the cornerstone, 
and we are the rocks that build a building of faith so that others can see it. Because if we are standing on Jesus, we are going to be upright. We are going to weather the storms of life. We are not going to be broken or washed away with the floods and the rains. And we are going to stand tall in Christ. And that is pretty cool. Um, because we as Christians form the church, really. You know, the church isn't about the building. I think we've learned that this year more than ever. We can still have church and be the church without even being at the building because we, the believers, are what make up the true body and the true church of Jesus Christ. Everyone can see God and come and worship him because they see how much we love God. And we, as these living stones founded on Jesus, provide this whole testament to other people that they can see. And this doesn't have to happen in a building because, I mean, we are the building. If you are following the king, if you are letting God be king of your life, you then become one of these stones in this building of faith that, you know, has been being built for a long time. There are people who were alive a long time ago and are now gone that are part of this building. And as we keep building and keep adding, it just gets bigger and bigger with those who follow and love Christ, you know. So here's Jesus, you know. This could be my grandma. She had very strong faith in God. And part of my memories when I was little was watching her um, read her Bible every day, even when she couldn't remember anymore. She was having a hard time remembering, and she couldn't remember what she read yesterday, but she'd write it down so that she knew the next day where to pick up in her Bible, and she would pray, and she followed God. So, you know, here's Jesus. Maybe this is my grandma Edith, you know. This could be my children's director from growing up, Twyla. She was a big example of faith in my life for me. And I'm sure you too have others that you know that are Christians that follow and love God. God is their king. They follow him. And if you don't, God will put those people in your life and you will get to know them. And you will get to see that strong example of what it means to live for Christ. Because Jesus is our rock, God is our cornerstone, and we are the living stones that represent him to the world, even when we can't be in the church building. So let's pray and ask God to help us line ourselves up with the cornerstone so that we can live lives that others see as being in line with God. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these friends. I thank you for being our Elohim, our Yahweh, our King, our cornerstone, and our rock. Help us, these baby followers in you that still have a lot to learn, help us look to you as our King so that we can become these living stones, these living pieces of this building of faith so that others might see us and know Jesus. They'll know that we are lined up with Jesus if we are part of this building of faith. Help us to love you more every day and learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends. See you next week.